Welcome to the lecture of ports of 8051 microcontroller and their internal structure. Objective of this lecture are to understand the function of each port pin and internal architecture of ports. 8051 has four ports and each port is of 8 bit. The first port is port 0. Port 0 can be used as normal bidirectional input-output port. That means we can connect input or output device to port 0 pin or it can be used as a multiplex address and data bus for connecting external data and address memory. So it is named as AD0 to AD7. That is A0 to A7 lower 8 bits of address bus and D0 to D7 lower data bits are multiplexed on this port 0 terminal. P0 is the register associated with port 0. So individual pins also we can access because it is bit and byte addressable register. So name of this pins can be written as P0.0, P0.1, up to P0.7. Second register or second port of 8051 is port 1. Port 1 can be used as a normal bidirectional I.O. port. That means we can connect input or output device to this port. So it has only this function and P1 register is associated with port 1. Again, individual bits can be accessed, read or write, and these bits can be named as P1.0, P1.1, up to P1.7. Port 2 is used as a normal bidirectional I.O. port, input-output port, or it can be used as higher 8-bit address bus for interfacing external memory. So it is named as A8 to A15. So it is higher address bus, 8 bits of address bus. P2 is the register associated with port 2. So individual bits can be accessed and these bits can be written as P2.0, P2.1, P2.2 up to P2.7. Or 8 bits also we can read or write at a time. It is bit byte addressable register. Port 3 is one of the important port of 8051. It can be used as a normal bidirectional input-output port or each pin of this port has some special function that we'll discuss. The register associated with this port is P3 register and you can access individual pins by using name as P3.0, P3.1, P3.2 up to P3.7. Now let us understand function of each port pin of port 3. The first pin P3.0 is generally written as RxD. It is used as a receiver terminal during serial communication of data. P3.1 is written as TxD. It is used to transmit a data serially during serial communication operation. P3.2 is hardware interrupt 0 pin and it is written as INT0 bar. So it is active low pin and used as a hardware interrupt. Pin 3.3 is hardware interrupt 1 pin. It is again active low pin and it is written as INT1 bar. P3.4 is T0 terminal and it is used to connect input when timer is used as a counter. That means when we are using counter 0 for operation. P3.5 is T1 pin and it is used as an input terminal during counter 1 operation. Pin P3.6 is write bar terminal, active low terminal and it is used as a write signal. P3.7 is RD bar terminal which is used as a read terminal. This read and write terminal 
are used when external memory is interfaced with 8051. Thank you for watching this video. Let us understand port 1 internal structure. Port 1 has 8 terminals that is P1.0 to P1.7. Each port pin is having such type of internal structure. So here it is written P1.x that means it can be P1.0 up to P1.7. The internal CPU bus of this particular terminal is connected to D latch or D flip flop. The Q output of flip flop is connected to tri state buffer and that is used to read a data from this latch. This Q bar output of latch is connected to gate terminal of FATE. Here, FATE is used as a switch and that is denoted as M1. One load register is connected to VCC from this FATE terminal. To read a data from this pin, read pin is used. Again, there is a tri-state buffer. Then write to latch terminal is used to connect. Write to latch terminal is used as a clock signal for this D flip flop. So this is general structure of uh, each port pin of port 1. Now let us understand write operation performed on port P terminal. So first we will see how logic 1 will be written at port terminal. To write logic 1 at port terminal, at internal data bus terminal, we will send a logic 1. So this logic 1 is connected to D input of this internal latch. Since D input is at logic 1, Q output of latch will be at 1 and Q bar output will be at logic 0. So this 0 will be connected to gate terminal of this fate switch. Since 0 is connected to its gate terminal, this switch will be turned off. And the output pin terminal P1.x will be connected to VCC through this load register L1. So VCC will be connected to P1.x. So P1.x will be at value VCC that is at logic 1. So we are sending logic 1 on data bus terminal and that 1 will be available at pin terminal. That means we are able to write logic 1 at pin terminal. Now how 0 is written at port terminal. To write 0, we will send a logic 0 on internal data bus terminal. So 0 is connected to D input of this internal latch. Since D input is at logic 0, Q output will be at logic 0 and Q bar output is at logic 1. Since logic 1 is connected to gate terminal of this fate, FATE turns on and the current will flow through this FATE. So current will flow through VCC to load register and to this to this FATE terminal to ground. So this P1.x terminal will be connected to ground through this FATE terminal. So it will get a low reactance path. So P1.x will be at ground terminal. That means it is at value 0. So we have written 0 on data bus and that is written at port terminal P1.x. So this is writing a value 0. Now let us understand the read operation performed at each port terminal. Now for read operation, we have to take one precaution. That is, before performing any read operation, logic 1 should be written at the port terminal. For example, before reading data from port, we have to set, suppose we are using P1.0 port terminal, 
then before performing read, read operation, set this bit to 1. That means uh, use instruction set bit p1.0. Or if uh, you are using hold p1 port as a read port, then you have to use this instruction move p1 comma hash 0 ffh. That means all port pins of port p1 are now at logic 1. And then only you can perform a read operation. Now why it is so, that we'll first understand. So here, suppose 0 is placed on this internal data bus. So what will happen? D will be at logic 0. So output Q is at logic 0. Q bar is at logic 1. And this transistors fit switch will turn on. Since fate switch is on, current will flow through this VCC load resistor and through this fate terminal. Now we want to perform read operation. We have assumed that initially zero is placed on the data bus, but now we want to perform read operation. So this read latch will be enabled for read operation. We'll send this read signal on this tri-state buffer and the user has want to read a data one or logic one is connected to this pin terminal. So what will happen since this pin is at logic one, current will also flow through this pin to this transistor to ground terminal. So there are two currents flowing through this transistor or through this fate switch. One is through this VCC and the other is through this pin terminal because pin is connected at logic one. So due to this two currents, large amount of current will flow through this transistor and transistor will get damaged. To avoid this damage of this transistor, when you are want to read a data from port pin terminal, this transistor should be kept off. And to keep this transistor off, we have to write logic one on this internal data bus. So if you write here one, D input is at one. So Q output will be at one and Q bar is at zero. So since zero is connected to gate of this switch, this switch is off. And now we can read a data that is logic one through this P1 terminal, through this tri-state buffer, and that will be placed back on this internal data bus. So we can read this logic one from this internal data bus. If logic zero is written at this pin terminal, or this pin is connected to ground by the input device, then logic zero will be given to internal data bus through this tri-state buffer. So to avoid damage of this transistor switch or fate switch, first you have to send logic one on each port terminal and then only perform a read operation. Now let us understand port zero internal structure. Now port zero can be used as a IO port that is input output port or it can be used as a multiplex lower order address and data bus that is AD0 to AD7. So since it is having two functions, this arrangement is used in the internal structure of port zero. This control signal will decide whether port will be used as an input output port or whether it will be used as a address data bus. So when control signal is zero, port is used as an input output port. And when control is zero, this MUX will connect Q bar output of this D latch to gate of this FIT switch. And when control signal is one, then port will act as an address data bus, multiplex address and data bus. And in that case, this gate terminal will be connected to this address data bus structure. So we'll see how it will be used as a input output port.
Now, how write operation is performed for port 0? So, first understand how 1 is written at port terminal. So, first, when we want to write 1, this 1 will be placed on the internal data bus that is connected to D input of this latch. So, Q output of this latch will be 1 and Q bar output will be 0. Now, in this case, control signal is 0. So, this switch will connect this gate terminal of fate switch to Q bar output of this flip-flop. Now, Q bar output is 0. That is connected to gate terminal of this switch. So, this fate switch is off. And since control signal is 0, the output of this AND gate is 0 and the upper transistor or switch is also off. So, in this case, both the switches are off. So, pin will float. This P0.x pin will float. Now, to avoid this floating of the pin, external pull-up resistors are generally connected for port 0. So, we have to connect the resistor between port pin and VCC. So, when both transistors or switches are off, this pin will be now connected to VCC through this pull-up resistor. So, output of this pin will be at VCC or this pin will be at logic 1. So, we are writing 1 on this data bus terminal and 1 is written at this port terminal. So, when port 0 is used for connecting any input device or output device, this pull-up resistors are connected to each port terminal. So, these resistors are connected between VCC and port terminal. Generally, 10 kilo ohm resistors are used. Writing 0 at port terminal of port 0. So, when we want to write 0, we will put 0 on internal bus terminal that is connected to D input of this flip-flop. So, Q output will be 0 but Q bar output will be at 1. Since control signal is 0, MUX will connect gate to this Q bar output. So, this gate of switch is at 1. So, this lower switch is on and since control is 0, this upper switch is off. So, output pin will be connected to ground through this switch. So, 0 will be written at this pin terminal. Now, to read the data from pin terminal, precaution is we have to write logic 1 first at this port terminal and then only try to read the data. So, when we write logic 1, D input is at logic 1. So, Q output is at 1 and Q bar output is at 0. Control signal is 0 for IO operation of port. So, this gate of switch is connected to Q bar. So, gate is at 0. So, lower switch is off and upper switch is off because control terminal is 0. So, both the switches are off. The terminal is in float condition, but when input device gives logic 1 here, Terminal is connected at logic 1 and this 1 will be read through this read input terminal or tri-state buffer and that 1 will be placed on data bus and microcontroller can read a logic 1 given by this input device. Same if input device uh, gives a data as logic 0 and microcontroller wants to read it. So, same operation, we will send here 1. So, both the switches are in off condition. This pin is in the float condition. And logic 0 will be placed on data bus through this tri-state buffer read pin. And microcontroller can read that data as logic 0. Port 2 internal structure. Port 2 can also be used as a simple input output port or it can be used as a higher 8 bit of address bus. 
that is a8 to a50 and because of this different functions of port 2 this arrangement multiplexer arrangement is used here when control signal is zero the gate of this switch is connected to q output of flip flop and this port will act as a input simple io port input output port when control terminal is one then this mux will connect this gate of uh, fate or switch to this address terminal so it will act as a higher order address bus terminal the other operation is same as a port 0 and port 1 operation port 3 of 8051 can be used as a input output port or each pin of port 3 has some special functions the functions are displayed here that is p3.0 is used as a rxd pin that is receiver pin for serial communication p3.1 is used as a transmitter pin of serial communication p3.2 is int0 bar it is external hardware interrupt p3.3 is int1 bar again external hardware interrupt 1 p3.4 is for external clock signal connection for counter counter 0 p3.5 is external clock signal connection for counter 1 p3.6 is read bar write bar terminal and p3.7 is read bar terminal so each of this port 3 pin has some special function and for that this alternate output function terminal is used and alternate input terminal is used the other operation as a io pin is same as port 0 and port 1 thank you for watching this video